DNA. Um, I'm embarrassed to say, but our embankment place building, which is 20 years old, and we're going through a strategy at the moment, should we stay or should we go, is probably in the G category. Um, we're also the first business, I think, to get the new BRIAM innovation points. Um, so we actually, we, we, we paid 80% 80 uh, 80 recycled aggregate used in the concrete, concrete which we paid for. Um, we used the heat recovery from the chillers. The developer originally wanted uh, electric perimeter heating. We actually we decided not to, to do that, and we, and we put low hot water heating in using the reheat from the... Have I won something? Yeah. Um, <laughs> very quickly, um, su supply chain, a anything you do in sustainability has ad its adverse uh, comments. We were originally going to use rapeseed oil. Um, so what we're actually doing now is re using uh, redundant cooking fuels, and we've been working with Uptown Oils to actually protect that. I'll very quickly flick through technology because um, we're not a Cisco, we're not a BT, and we're not a Microsoft, so we've actually been utilising uh, our existing infrastructure to get more flexibility and mobility out of that. And finally, change management. Um, you can't do a project without change management and engagement of the business with the business. Alistair's already mentioned that. And I, th I think the mantra in respect of workplace is uh, very similar to location, location. It's about change management, more change management, and even more change management to be successful. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much indeed, Paul. Uh, fascinating uh, presentation. Uh, uh, final in our triumvirate of professional services, uh, can I wel welcome uh, Ralph Oswald of Ernst & Young. Great. Thanks so much, Jeremy. Um, uh, so without Julia. That's correct, yes. Uh, Julia couldn't make it today, I'm afraid. Um, so I'm the third, uh, as you said, of the uh, professional services firms. I hope you're not too um, bored already of the accountants. Um, but I'm coming at this from a slightly different angle. Um, my two colleagues, Alistair and Paul, have talked about, um, I think, the buildings mainly. I'm going to talk about a particular facility uh, in our building in Moor London. Uh, and as you learned, we will be neighbours with uh, PwC. Uh, very shortly. Um, so I've gone through probably most of the uh, phases that Alistair um, described as an actual resident in the building. Uh, I want to talk to you about uh, what we call the Cube, um, which is a facility uh, in our building um, that uh, we've come up with uh, and that's been sort of come or that's come from the uh, business development and knowledge management side. Um, and just to give you a bit of an overview of what I'd like to cover in this session, um, first, uh, I don't think I need to spend much time on this. Um, again, you're familiar with the uh, accountancy firms, I think. But just to give you a bit of background of where this has come from, um, what, uh, an overview of what the Cube actually is. Uh, and rather than talk a lot about it, I'll show you a little video uh, so you can see what it is, because it sounds a bit uh, ominous to most people. Um, and a little bit about the uh, technology we use in the Cube. Uh, and part of the technology we use in there are smart boards. Uh, and depending on how you have attended these two days, some of you will have heard directly from smart. I believe yesterday it was. Others will be probably familiar with the technology. They're smart interactive whiteboards. And they've been serving us very well um, so far. Uh, and then lastly, the uh, five success factors um, that have contributed to the Cube success to date and will hopefully do so in the future as well. And then we'll have some time for Q&A as well. Um, a bit of background, as I said, um, EY is one of the uh, global professional services firms you're most likely familiar with. Uh, a lot of people, over 135,000 globally, um, scattered across many countries around the world in about 700 offices. Um, the part I want to focus on here slightly more is the EMEA integration we've gone through over the past couple of years. Um, the firm has created um, five areas globally. Um, EMEA is one of those areas. In the EMEA area, uh, we have a number of different sub-areas, mostly structured around countries. Uh, in my case, I'm part of the uh, Financial Services Organization, FSO. <laughs> and the interesting part here is that FSO is not a sub-area that's a geographical sub-area, but it's a functional sub-area around financial services that spans across 12 countries uh, and encompasses about 6,000 people. So the challenge there, 
for us mainly, is how do we get those 6,000 people to work together and to serve clients, no matter where the teams are based, but to serve clients consistently. And this is where we'll come to the cube. Um, a bit of background on knowledge and business development, uh, because that, um, these are the two areas uh, that sort of have contributed the most to the creation of the cube. Um, knowledge management is very important to us as a firm, um, because again, if you look at the number of people um, that we have in this sub area, in particular about 6,000, how do we get these people to interact, to connect? Uh, how do we get Paul, who is in London, to connect with um, Alistair, who's in Amsterdam, if they work for the same client, uh, but they might work, uh, they might provide different services? How do we, uh, how do we get them to connect up and to actually work together to present as one firm and not as two distinct um, entities that provide various different services to that client? Uh, knowledge management uh, is an area that uh, connects people internally, uh, that provides people internally with information that they need to serve clients, and that also enables people to learn about the clients that they serve. Uh, in turn, business development, um, in my opinion, acts a little bit as the glue um, between what we call service lines, the sub-areas I was just talking about, and the different sectors as well. Sectors, uh, in this case, in the um, FS, in the financial services organization, um, are asset management clients that we serve, uh, banking and capital markets, government clients, etc. Uh, so there's lots of different silos in the firm, and the challenge again is how do we connect? How do we connect them up and get them to work together to serve clients effectively? And, and that leads me to um, the cube, uh, and the cube is what we call um, an, initi an initiative um, that is supposed to drive value from connecting people across the sub-area and across those different silos and creating a space for them where they can collaborate, where they can come up with new ideas, can be creative together uh, to actually serve clients much better than they used to. And now actually to show you what the cube looks like, this is a short video. Right, the cube. Uh, and uh, you probably had uh, various different ideas of what I mean with the cube uh, and different imaginations. So this is what it looks like. Uh, and really what it is, it's a collaborative space. Um, as you saw, you probably sp uh, spotted the uh, smart electronic whiteboards in there. Uh, the important bit is that it, there is technology in there, but the technology is the enabler. It's not the be all and end all. Uh, but it's really about the experience that people have in that space. And the three elements you see here on this slide, people, um, the data walls or the electronic whiteboards, as you can call them as well, uh, and the accelerated interactive experience, this is what makes the cube. And if you're still wondering what is this guy talking about when he says the cube, the cube is what we um, created as a brand. Uh, and I'll come to that later on. Uh, it's not an acronym, um, so don't try and make up words uh, from, from, the, uh, from the letters in, that, in the word. Uh, it is merely a brand uh, to promote this facility internally in the firm. But really the important thing is that you get the right people into the facility. Uh, I was talking earlier about the amount of people that we have. Uh, they work in various different teams serving clients. The important bit is that if you have a meeting in this facility, you get the right people in there from the right service lines, 
from the right sectors uh, and from um, other uh, speciality areas. They make use of the technology, but again, the technology is only an enabler. Uh, the important bit is that there is a clear, uh, a clear agenda that you want to uh, follow, uh, a clear um, sort of um, a business value that you want to drive from the cube. Uh, and what you can use the technology for is to display different sets of data. We have six interactive smart boards in our cube. Uh, you can display data, you can interact with the data, with the electronic pens, those of you who have seen those in the, other, in the smart presentation yesterday. Uh, and you can, you can enrich the experience in there. And that's really what the cube is about, to create that, um, that interactive experience where people feel free to share knowledge, they can learn from the uh, data points that are presented on the boards uh, and they can then take away what's being created in the cube and share that with, uh, with their colleagues afterwards. And just to go into a little bit more detail um, of what can be achieved in the cube, uh, in terms of what, is, what it facilitates, it just facilitates a richer experience than what you usually get in a standard meeting environment. In a usual meeting environment, whether it's in an old building or in a new building, you get a fairly standard setup uh, where you have a big table people sit around at, one person presenting, lots of people taking notes on their own notepads, whether they're on paper or electronic, and then go away. What happens afterwards is often unclear. What we try to create here is a space where people share their knowledge freely. Um, everyone can walk up to one of the boards, um, point out what they think is important, add to the presentation with the pens, with the electronic pens, and the great thing is that at the end, everything can be saved straight away and sent around via email. When you get back to your desk, everyone's got it right there. It might be in slightly awkward handwriting, depending on the person, um, but at least you feel a certain ownership of it because you can spot, oh, actually, I wrote this, I contributed this. Oh, and this was actually Dave that contributed this from um, business development. So there's a sense of ownership uh, that comes from that meeting rather than from the standard meeting setup I just described earlier. Uh, and just to give you a bit of background of what the project actually entailed, because my colleagues spoke about the kind of the, uh, the journey of the project as well, um, we started this as a proof of concept uh, about two years ago, as you can see. Um, obviously, this entailed getting sponsorship, uh, getting the funding. Uh, one of my colleagues here mentioned this earlier as well. Uh, money isn't necessarily free-flowing and hasn't been for the past couple of years, so it needed to have a solid business grounding um, to invest in a facility like this, not just to have fancy technology in a fancy building. Um, we moved to a permanent um, first cube on an internal floor uh, to actually open it up to our internal people to gauge is this something that people take to? Um, how are they using it? Uh, and what value are they getting out of it? Um, this worked really well. Um, people actually started to <coughs> smuggle in um, clients, which they, they shouldn't have. Um, we let them because it worked really well. That then led to um, the acknowledgement that we actually need to create um, a space that is client ready, that is a bit more representative. Uh, and that's where we moved, or when we moved the cube to a, a larger room. Um, added a couple more of the smart boards and also moved it uh, what we have as the top floor in the building which is an entire floor of client uh, meeting suites. Uh, and this is where it is now um, and obviously now we're continuously um, refining the methodologies we're using in there to have effective meetings. Um, the number of client meetings is ever increasing uh, which is really satisfying and actually really interesting to me as well. So it's not only internal meetings that are taking place where people are uh, taking advantage of the facilities, but also they're very happy to bring in clients. And the feedback we get from clients is um, wholly positive on this. Um, a couple of points on the success factors that I mentioned earlier, and I'm going to run through these